Hello everybody, I'm Dan Herring. My channel is FishDan365 and welcome back to Top Water Tuesday. Batten down the hatches because today we're going to be talking about the Arbogast Jitterbug. So the jitterbug is a lure that goes way back. A gentleman by the name of Fred Arbogast who started a production of a number of different fishing lures back in 1926 came out with a wooden version of the jitterbug. I think it became came in mass production sometime around 1939. So this bait has been around a long, long time and it is a fantastic topwater lure that has certainly passed the test of time. So the lure is made of plastic today and it comes in several sizes. This is the standard size. It's basically a plug with a metal lip on it, almost cupped like a spoon, almost as if it was a spoon mounted on the front of the lure. I became familiar with the jitterbug when I was about four or five years old and my dad used to fish this bait quite a bit. My dad was a huge jitterbug fan and he probably had 50 of these lures if not 100. That's how much he liked this lure and fished this lure. My dad was born in 1922. He died a few years ago in 2019. and. I left behind so many of these jitterbugs that uh, my brother and I are still going through them. But he, my dad did a lot of uh, inter interesting modifications to the bait too and we'll go over that in a little bit. But the standard jitterbug has this metal lip like we talked about and the hooks have this hardware on it that I don't like. And it's the same deal as the Zara Spook. It, uh, if you can see that, see how those hooks won't hang freely? They won't do what this one does. This one's been modified, so you can see. And when you have hooks like that, well, when a fish gets on there and they put pressure on the bait, they can wedge themselves right off the hook. And that happens fairly often uh, with the jitterbug. And you just don't want to take a risk like that losing a big fish because this is a big fish bait and who wants to take a risk like that losing a, a large fish so the way you deal with that is it's the same modification that i showed with the zara spook and i'll put that up here again for anybody who's interested but basically you take that hardware off and then you get a screw eye and you put a screw eye in the belly where the hardware had been in the center and then instead of having one near the back, you put it right at the tail. And just put a screw eye in the tail, put a split ring on both of those, and you can put your hooks on that way. Now this is uh, one of the ones that I inherited, inherited from my dad. And so it does not have the hooks that I would normally use. I, I always change these hooks out to Gamagatsu EWGs. They hold better, they work really well. I have a ton of confidence in those hooks. And the proper size hook for this bait probably a number four, at least for this size jitterbug. The jitterbug also comes in a larger jointed style, like this one. You see it's got a little bit bigger profile and it's jointed. There's also a musky size jitterbug. It's very large with a much larger lip. It's uh, basically for musky fishing, but big bass will hit that one too. And then there's a smaller size, shaped a little bit like a peanut uh, with a smaller lip. I understand that they work quite well for brown trout at night in some of the larger streams and rivers. Never tried that myself, but uh, I'd like to. So we talked about the modification with the hooks, and, and that's important if you're going to use this bait. Another mod that my, my dad started doing, and I often wondered why he did this, but this it works really well. I just don't know what led him to do it. I can't help but think that it may have been that he lost a big bass on one of these jointed ones because the bass tore the back end off and was only hooked on the back end. But what he did was he would take the, the joint out, take it apart, and then he would just glue the two jointed pieces together. You can see 
oops, that's a big one too. You can see the difference in size here. And so he'd just take that and glue them together and then put a hook in the back, a hook in the belly, and that ends up looking like this one. This one is the same size. It's bigger than the standard jitterbug. He glued this one so well and painted it so well you can't even see the seam. Uh, he did a really good job with that one. And so it's a larger profile jitterbug and it still has that same sound and, and works the same way. Bigger profile generally catches bigger fish. And one of the biggest bass I've ever seen caught in Pennsylvania was a large mouth that my wife Lisa caught at Lake Mincy on this very jitterbug. It was before I took the hooks out of it because I wanted to modify it. She was using an unmodified jitterbug. This was back probably in the uh, late, late 1980s, early 1990s. And she caught a giant large mouth uh, on a jitterbug first thing in the morning at daybreak. And that's one thing we want to talk about when to fish this bait. <clears throat> it's usually best at daybreak or dusk in low light conditions. And it's really, really good at night. It's hard to beat a black jitterbug at night. This thing is one of the best, if not the best, top water lure at night you can throw for largemouth bass. Catch a smallmouth too. But anybody who's ever fished at night with a jitterbug knows the excitement this thing can, can produce. Now I can't tell you how many times I've thrown this thing at night and had a huge blow up right at the boat because at night the bass tend to follow the bait right to the boat. They don't know the boat is there and they'll come right to the edge of the boat and blow up on it. And boy, that could wake you up in a hurry. But uh, over the years, I've caught quite a number of big large mouths, especially on a black jitterbug at night. You know, I've fished this bait quite a bit myself over the years. So much so that I that I know the sound so well that I can make the sound myself. If you're if you're throwing this with a slow retrieve, it'll sound like this. Medium retrieve. Fast retrieve. You know, things are getting pretty crazy when I'm sitting here doing a video mimicking the noise of a jitterbug. Can't wait to get out and fish. Anyway, there's been some other things that have happened with the jitterbug over the years. One of them is some time ago, Arbogast started coming out with a jitterbug with a clear plastic lip instead of a metal one. Metal, here's a clear plastic one that my dad painted. You can see there's some red paint on there. And we got excited when they came out with this because we thought it would make a better daytime lure. That, that metal lip is kind of uh, obvious in the daytime and a clear plastic lip, not so much. And so my dad would fish this a little bit more during the day and he caught plenty of fish on it, but we did notice that the sound it produced was not quite the same. And that metal lip being thicker, more rigid, it just makes it cuts the water a little bit differently it just makes and it's a little heavier uh, balances the bait a little bit differently and makes a little bit of a better sound i think now there's been some other lure manufacturers on the market that have used clear plastic lips on theirs now at uh, livingston lures comes to mind i think they have like a minnow bait with a clear plastic lip on it i understand it's a pretty good lure I will probably be buying a few of those in the future just to see how they are. I, haven't, I don't have one now, but maybe we'll do a video on that one in the future. But that sound that this bait makes is the key. It is a very unique sound. There's nothing else out there that makes the sound that this makes, at least that, that I'm aware of, unless it has a lip like this. Now there are some frogs, like River to Sea makes a, a, a special type of bullywa frog that uh, has a lip on it like this. It's actually weedless and, and that has the same sound because it's got a very similar lip like this, plastic like this one. So that sound is what is what attracts the fish. And at night, on dark nights, throwing that black jitterbug, that's when you can call some very large fish up and, and uh, catch some big fish that way. This lure shines best when the water is warm. Generally, most top waters are that way. So when the water reaches the 60 degree mark in the mid 60s, we're talking later in spring and it's, it's good right through early fall, but the best time to use this, my dad would say this all the time, was the month of August when the water's at its warmest point. And I think overall he was right. August is a really good month to fish the jitterbug in these parts where we live here in Pennsylvania. 
And when you have that hot, warm water, when you have the warm nights and uh, warm water at night, this is just a really go-to bait for big, largemouth bass especially. Let's talk about retrieves. Generally, a slow to moderate retrieve, steady retrieve works best with this bait. There are times where stop and go can work as well, and sometimes rushing it along, plowing it real fast, and then stopping it. That has proven to work as well. But day in and day out, because of the noise this bait makes, especially if you're fishing it at night, you just want that steady, moderate retrieve. It allows the fish to zero in on it, catch up to it, and suck it in. And that, uh, that crazy jitterbug sound really attracts fish. And when that topwater bite is on at night, especially, this is one bait that's difficult to beat. Anytime you have shallow water environments, weed edges, wood, or open water that's not too deep, this bait is a killer. Well, I hope you found the video to be helpful. If you did, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell. You'll get a notification for when the next video is becoming available. We're all about the art and science of fishing, especially bass fishing. Looking forward to bringing you another Top Water Tuesday next week. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.